In this video, I'm going to be describing how we can use a shell to find the volume of a solid. What I mean by a shell is a hollowed out cylinder. So we use this method where it's best used when we're rotating a curve around the y-axis. So sometimes using the washer method or even the disc method sometimes when revolved around the y-axis can get a little tricky. So this is a good technique to know and to be able to use because it makes graphs that revolve around the y-axis just a bit easier sometimes if we can use this method. So you can think about how we're filling up a solid with these shells. It's kind of like, um, like a Russian paper doll. It gets smaller and smaller as you work inside or if you work inside out, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You can also think about, like if you visualize rings on a tree, how they start in the center and grow outward. And you might also be able to just look at a toilet paper roll because it does the exact same thing as well. So if you don't already know, it might be good to know or understand that a cylinder is just a rectangle that gets wrapped around uh, a circle of some kind. So the length of our rectangle as it wraps around that circle becomes the circumference of the circle. The height is still the same thing as it was in the rectangle. And so we can think about the surface area of a rectangle or the lateral surface area of a cylinder is what I meant to say right there, uh, as being the circumference of a circle times the height. Because our base times height got changed into the circumference of a circle times height. And so that becomes 2 pi r being the circumference of a circle times height. So just a fancy way of finding the area of a rectangle, if we think about it being wrapped around a circle and in terms of a cylinder. We can find the volume of this cylindrical shell if we know the width of our shell. All we would need to do is take this formula times the width of the shell. What I mean by the width here, just this little bit. So the thicker the shell is or the skinnier the shell is, that's the width of the shell. So when we put all this together in function notation, two pi is just gonna be a constant. It's gonna stay two pi. The shell radius, if we think about the radius of each of these circles as coming from the origin out to the outside here, that would be our x value that we're evaluating at. And if it was to grow thicker, that would be our x value. So the radius of our shell is really just the x value that we're using to evaluate the function with. The height of our shell is the output evaluated at that input. So if I plug in an x value, the output is the height of our function or the height of a shell. So the height just becomes our function value. And the width of the shell is our change in our radius of the shell. Well, if we look on an x-axis, that would be the change in x. So changing 2 pi rh times the width of the shell becomes 2 pi x f of x times our change of x. And if we do that volume an infinite amount of times, we can integrate and then it turns into the formula to find the volume using a cylindrical shell. So our 2 pi is a constant that we put out front of our integral. We're going to be integrating on an interval from A to B. X is going to be our input. F of X is going to be our function. Change of X becomes DX. So really all we need to think about is what is the shell radius in terms of X? And what is our function? Other than that, it's pretty similar to just integrating the area under a curve. So let's do an example here. We're going to take this function. We're going to focus on the interval from 0 to 1. So if we visualize this x minus x cubed function from 0 to 1, and then think about the area under the curve, and we spin this horizontally or around the y-axis, it's going to create some sort of a bowl shape with a hole in the middle. 
So we could think, well, if it has a hole in the middle, we want to use our washer method, but that can get a little complicated sometimes. So let's see how the shell method makes it a lot easier. So if we just think about what is our shell radius, well, that's our x value here. And our shell height is determined by the function or the output of the function given that input value. We're going to have 2 pi our constant out in the front. We're going to integrate on our interval from 0 to 1. And we're going to do that in terms of x. So the first thing we could do is distribute that x inside here and simplify our function here. So we don't have to use a product rule. There is no product rule for integrating. So instead, we have the function x squared minus x to the fourth. Now we can find the antiderivative and evaluate that at 1 and at 0. So here's our antiderivative. If I plug in a 1, I get 1 third minus 1 fifth. And then if I subtract it, evaluate it at 0, well, that's just 0. So we can ignore the end there. So all we got to do is subtract this fraction. We'll get common denominators first. And when we subtract, we get 2 fifteenths. If I multiply that by 2 pi, we get our final volume of our solid to be about 4 fifteenths pi, or, five pi, or 4 pi over 15, which is about 0 0.838. So if we wanted to use the washer method, it is possible, but in order to use the washer method revolved around the y-axis, we have to get our function in terms of y, or in other words, solve for x, and that's not very easy to do with this one. So choosing the shell method, much easier, and not too many steps there. Let's do another example. This time we're given this function, and we want to find the region or the area between this function and the x-axis or y equals zero, that horizontal line. So we get this shaded region and we're going to rotate that region around the y-axis and create another bowl shape with a giant gap in the middle. So because we have a gap in the middle, because we're rotating around the y-axis, the shell method is always a good choice to try out. So we need our shell radius. Again, that's just going to be our x value, depending on how uh, big the radius is, whether it goes to here or over to here or over to here. It's always just going to be whatever x value we want. So we're going to substitute x there. We want the shell height, which is always going to be represented by the output of our function. And so we're just going to plug our function into that spot. We'll keep our 2 pi constant out front. How do we know where we're going to integrate or what the intervals of our integration are? Well, you could look at it on the graph. And so we know we're integrating from 2 to 4. You could also set these two functions equal to each other to find the intersection points. Well, just setting this equal to 0 would be finding the zeros of that function which occur at the x-axis at 2 and 4. Lots of ways to think about how we get those intervals. But we're going to integrate from 2 to 4. Let's distribute first and simplify these two products here. So we get negative x cubed plus 6x squared minus 8x. Now we can find the antiderivative when we integrate and evaluate it at 4 and subtract it, evaluate it at 2. So plugging a 4 into all of this creates this. Plugging a 2 into all of this creates this. We're going to simplify and subtract those two values. And eventually, what ends up happening over here is this simplifies to 0. This simplifies to negative 4. And we're subtracting negative 4, which means it's just positive 4 times 2 pi. So the volume is about 8 pi. All right, we're going to do one more example in another video because I'm running out of time. But we'll be able to compare the uh, shell method with the washer method in one example and see how they are quite the same. And sometimes you have a choice between which is easier. Sometimes both are equally the same.